Rendering is the most important concept in React. The advent of React.js automatically widened the opportunities for front-end developers in creating user-friendly interfaces. When we talk about React.js, we have to specify the concept of rendering. Rendering is the process of React asking your components to describe what they want their section of the UI to look like. Hi, I am Aditi from Data is Good, working as a data science evangelist. In today's video, we are going to learn how to render an element in React. So before you start this course, let me reiterate. There are no prerequisites for this course. Each and every concept would be covered with great details. At Data is Good, we have trained thousands of students in our live classes and helped them make successful data science careers. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get all the updates and new content. So now it's time to get started. Let's first see the agenda of this lecture. So agenda for this React course is how rendering works in React.js, how re-rendering works in React.js. We'll also have a couple of assignments for you so that you can practice on your own. Now, outcome. Our goal for this course is to know how the rendering and re-rendering process takes place in React.js. So after this video, you will get a good grasp of the rendering process that takes place in React.js. All right, so without any delay, let's start the session. Let's first understand what is rendering. Rendering is the most important procedure that a programmer has to manage in front-end development and is responsible for describing the view to be rendered to the browser window. What are the elements in React? Elements are the smallest building blocks of React apps. In simple words, we can say an element describes what we want to see on the screen. Let's understand how rendering works in React. When we run React application, the code returned in components gets translated into elements that get mounted on the DOM. React documentation splits the work into two phases. Have a look at your screen. So there are two phases, render phase and commit phase. Let's first understand what is render phase. The first phase is the render phase as we just discussed. During this phase, the React will start at the root of the component tree and go downwards to the leaf components. While traversing each of the components, React will convert these components, JSX, into React elements through the inward element method and store that rendered output. React elements are basically JavaScript objects that describe the structure of the UI. Once JSX to React element conversion is done, the entire components tree, all the React elements, they are handed over to the commit phase. Now in the commit phase, the React elements are applied to the DOM using the React DOM package. This is the rendering behavior of just the initial render React application in components. Now let's understand this with examples. In order to render any element into the browser DOM, we need to have a container or root DOM element. It's almost a convention to have a div element with the ID root or ID is equal to app to be used as the root DOM element. Now let's suppose our index.html file has this statement inside it. Now, in order to render a simple React element to the root node, we must write this in the app.js file. Now, we have created the first ever React element and also have rendered it in place. But React was not developed to create static pages. The intention of using React is to create a more logical and active web page. In order to do so, we will need to update the elements and we need to re-render in order to update the UI. Now let's understand re-render. During the render phase, React starts at the root of the components tree and goes downwards to the leaf components, hence finding all the components that have been flagged as 
leading updates. A component flag can update itself by calling the useStateSetup function or calling useReduceDispatch function. Then for each of the flagged components, React will invoke. Then for each of the flagged components, React will invoke createElement method and convert the components JSX into React element and store that rendered output. Once a conversion is done for all the flag components and components affected by the flag components, React will compare a new set of React elements with the ones produced from last renders. A list is created with all the changes made to the DOM and handled over the commit phase. In the commit phase, changes are actually applied to the DOM. Rendering is not the same as updating. The DOM difference is very important because the components may be rendered without any visible changes to the DOM. For example, during rendering, if the components convert into React elements, as we did in the previous lesson, render elements are discarded and no changes are applied to the DOM. This difference is more important because there are performance issues because of slow DOM update. React updates DOM efficiently in the sense that all updates are batched. Update at once helps in performance issues when updating incurs multiple times in rapid succession. Now, if we refer to React Docs, it states that commit phase is usually very fast, but the rendering can be slow. This single line is sufficient enough for us to understand how components render, why they re-render, and how they optimize the rendering of the components. Now, let's understand with examples. In this example, the date dot to local time string method is used to fetch the time from a given date object. Syntax, parameter. Well, this method does not accept any parameter. It is just used along with the date object from which we want to fetch the time. Return values. It returns a string, which is time, from a given date object. We have created a function show time that displays the current time. We have set an interval of 1000 milliseconds or one second that recalls the function each second, thus updating the time in each call. For simplicity, we have only shown the time span of one second. In the example of displaying the current time at each second, we call the render method. Virtual DOM gets updated and then the differentiator checks for the particular differences in the browser DOM. The virtual DOM then updates what is required. Now in the given example, the time is the only thing that is getting changed each time, not the title, which is welcome to data's good. Thus React only updates the time itself making it much more efficient than conventional DOM manipulation. Now, re-render summary. There is render phase in which we find all elements flagged for the update. For each flagged component, convert JSX to React element and store the result. React will then perform reconciliation, which will differentiate the old and the new tree of React elements, also known as a virtual DOM. Hand over the changes to the next phase, commit phase. Apply changes to the DOM, great. Now you know how this process works. So in this lecture, we talked about how rendering and re-rendering work in React.js. And now there is an assignment for everyone. What is virtual DOM? How does React use the virtual DOM to render the UI? Write down your answer in the comment section. So I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Please don't forget to write your comments in the comment section. And for any queries or help, you can contact us at our email ID. So this is it. I'll meet you in the next lecture. Goodbye and keep learning.